When you click that thing you know you shouldn't have and your entire company's network gets owned. Yeah, that's right, ThreatWire's back. Hi, I'm Darren Kitchen, and this is ThreatWire, your summary of the threats to our security, privacy, and internet freedom. And this begins the first episode after being on hiatus for more than a year, and we are so excited to be kicking it off right with a full cast of contributors. So we're gonna start it off right now with our good friend, Snubs. Over 25,000 iOS and OS X apps may be vulnerable to SSL snooping attacks, as reported on Friday by Source DNA. The AF Networking Library, a popular networking framework, was audited to reveal that any attacker with a valid SSL certificate could intercept would-be secure internet traffic from the affected apps. The bug essentially comes down to domain name validation, something that was turned off by default in AF Networking. This means that if an app wanted to make a secure connection to, say, httpsexample.com, I, as an attacker, could give it the valid SSL certificate for HTTPS hack5.org in AF networking, wouldn't care that the domain names don't match. This is hot off the heels of a report last week that the framework would accept self-signed certificates. This means that an attacker wouldn't even have needed to spend the $50 on a valid certificate to intercept secure traffic. Unlike web apps where you can check the address bar in your browser for the HTTPS and inspect the certificate, smartphone apps don't have any standardized way for users to check the security. Source DNA does maintain an iOS security report where you can look up a developer's iTunes account and see if their app is affected. For example, the Microsoft Health app, which until recently was affected by this bug. Over the weekend, Tesla Motors got triple hacked. Ouch, both the company's Twitter account, CEO Elon Musk's personal Twitter account, and the teslamotors.com homepage were hijacked. The Tesla Twitter account was renamed to hashtag RIPPRGang and tweeted, get a free Tesla, call, and a phone number. That phone number was out of Rootworks, a self-proclaimed Linux guy and IT worker. Root has since posted what amounts to hacker group squabbles, including claims that the perpetrator was a young Finnish hacker he had previously blogged about hacking at EC Council, creator of the Certified Ethical Hacker Program. So far, the fiasco has culminated in threatening phone calls and visits. Quote, some Nimrod actually showed up to my house today to claim a free car. Dude, that sucks, and good luck straightening it out with the FBI. At the time of recording, there has been no official response from Tesla Motors, who is probably busy with their upcoming home battery announcement. Contributions from the community this week include an Irish Times story submitted by Rami Ram on Google Plus on the user mistakes that aid in cyber attacks. Okay, so we get it. Companies get hacked all the time. That's just a fact of life. And this is not going to be a roundup of who's got egg on their face this week. I mean, that's just karma gunning for its dogma. What I mean though is, yo, Tesla, I know it hurts to get owned, but we're all anxiously awaiting the debrief. The internet loves a good who done it. So try to keep it classy with some charts and graphs. Either way, when this does inevitably happen, many corporations are quick to point out the sophistication of the attackers in sort of a PR move to save face. And oftentimes you see the APT acronym for Advanced Persistent Threat thrown around. And these days you can pretty much just say nation state actor if you want to blame it on North Korea. But the fact of the matter is that oftentimes it's far less advanced than you might think. At least getting in the front door, because that's all it takes with a well-crafted email. And this is most evident in a recent data breach investigation report from Verizon Communications. Now Verizon has been maintaining this report for 10 years now with data from 70 contributors with nearly 80,000 incidents. So I'd say say they've got a pretty good idea of the trends of cyber attacks. And one of the interesting findings over the last five years is that phishing is on the rise. And there's probably a good reason for it. Well, security software vendors would love to have you guys think that attackers always get in through unpatched software and vulnerabilities. The same software, of course, that they can sell you a solution for. The fact of the matter is that it's much easier to compromise the weakest link. That's humans. That's right. Phishing attacks exploit this, and unfortunately, there isn't a patch for human ignorance. Of the 290 electronic espionage cases in the report, more than two-thirds involved phishing emails. Even our very own penetration tester buddy Mubix on Metasploit Minute agrees that it is a very effective tactic because it only takes one employee to get owned before you can start breaching out through the rest of the network. So I don't know if it's an effectiveness of phishing that's like a sign of uh, internet literacy 
legacy or generational thing that'll eventually phase out, but I highly encourage everybody to take at least a few fishing quizzes. There are some in the links in the descriptions, and if anybody's counting, I'm a 13 of 14 on the Open DNS quiz and a 90% on the McAfee quiz. Feel free to share your scores in the comments, and that brings me to speak of comments, which is let us know about your thoughts. Leave us a comment. The most thoughtful and insightful ones will be featured here. Also, first. See, no need to do that now. Now, before we go, I do want to give a huge thanks to everyone who has supported the show throughout our hiatus. Your contributions, your shares, your likes, that is what's bringing this back. And of course, we can't do it without you. So please, if you can, spare a few cents an episode, consider becoming a patron at patreon.com slash threatwire. And we're keeping Threatwire completely independent, so no ads, no networks. So this is your show. It's truly in your hands. And you can find all of the episodes and links to our social networks and all the other ways to contribute over at threatwire.net. With that, I'm Darren Kitchen. I'll see you on the internet.